and then what we have to do is we have to pick the two. So the whole concept of scanning is that to have points of reference, we have to go a half tooth distal and a half tooth mesial. Right. Right. So if I'm working this model that I have right here, I'm working on on a four six or. I don't know the American numbering system, so whatever you call it. Right. 30. 30, okay. So I pick number 30. If I was doing a quadrant, I would pick that tooth as well, and then I would select what type of restoration I was doing. The concept is I scan a half tooth from the distal moving forward to the mesial. Okay. Okay. So I've picked 30, crown, inlay, onlay, veneer, thin veneer, implant crown, and this is a temporary bridge material. So the update in the software for these functions are probably going to come, they figure, in about a month or two. Again, like you said, they don't give us hard dates on software releases just because there's always so much going on. Right. They're pretty close within a month. Okay. Um, library, library A is Lee Culp. If you do a wax up and you want to copy it, we would copy it under Culp. Right. So I'm going to use Lee's library because he makes nice teeth. Then we pick our material. So we have a choice of three translucencies of Empress, high, low, and multi. Really your bread and butter, anything on the interior, you're only going to stock the multi. Anything in the posterior, you're going to do an e -box. okay? Um, the composite materials, I'll be honest, I don't really have any users that use them. The Telio, this is your temporary temporary material for bridges. And then we have a burnout, uh, burnout block, so if you want to have a, a, an all gold crown, you can mill full contour in a burnout block get it to a lab technician and then we'll make you burn it out crown exactly okay. the same way as normal without having to do the wax up. Okay. Okay? So let's just pick Emacs because that would be pretty standard for here and then you pick your shape. So then we go into our scanning tab. So two ways to scan either with the foot panel or with the rapid scan and I'm going to use the rapid scan. Now this is an important point to make here. When you buy our system all of the improvements are done in through software. Okay, uh -huh. the system was engineered so that all the improvements are done through software improvements. All of your software upgrades with the system are included for either a three or a five year term depending on which package you purchase. So it's pretty typical, every dentist that I've sold a machine to has bought the five year software plan. So this, this laser in the beginning was used with the foot pedal. Okay? Um, we upgraded it to rapid scan, automatic capture, Seric AC if you want to do the comparison. All of our users got that upgrade at no charge, okay, because it was a software application, opposed to having to trade in the hardware and then buy a new piece of technology to get the improvements. So okay. Basil's committed to the engineers and to their users that the improvements are going to be done through search of Okay, There's going to be new types of lasers introduced down the road, OCT, optical coherence tomography, which will allow you to read up to three or four millimeters through soft tissue. You know, these are all things that are coming down the road. But you're not going to get stuck with it. They'll take it as a trade-in, and then you just buy the new right. laser. So these are all things that that the company's working on. Okay. So the scanning process goes like this: um, you can control the speed of the scan, uh, the rapid scan setting. Right now, I'm going to move it down a little bit faster so that it's a little more true to uh, true application, and then you save it. So to turn it on, you just press the space bar, and you can see the camera's live. It will not take a picture until I'm not moving. Okay. So the scanning process goes like this. I take a half tooth, half tooth distal, prep tooth. I can feel a hand on my shoulder. It's Carl. Hey, to, hey, buddy, how are you? Just wanted to say hi. How you doing, Carl? Good, you? Good to see you, man. Okay, then I, what I do is I take bio-specific models here. So I'm taking a roll on the buckle because what I want to do is I want the true contours of my neighboring teeth. If I have the true contours of my neighboring teeth, it means that my interproximal contacts are going to be absolute. They're going to be, they're going to be really good. Okay, so then I just move along and it takes my shots. So there's my scanning process, I'm done. Now, obviously this is done in the mouth. Okay, we're working Correct. off the of models today because we're on a showroom floor and I don't think they would like it too much if I put this in my mouth and started taking pictures. Um, but I would say 95 plus percent of your imaging is all done intraorally. Okay. Um, still, the most important thing when it comes to CAD CAM is preparation and tissue management. The tissue is covering up the tooth. You're going to have problems if you don't have a nice sharp margin. You're also going to have problems. So, tissue and uh, tissue management preparation are, are, are paramount. Right. Um, Five percent. You know, if you're working on a seven or, 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 or a molar and you cannot get the camera back, then you can take an impression, and we can also scan impression material. Okay. Okay, so we can build our virtual file the same way, 
scanning off of an impression and then what we do is we hit the impression mode button and then it'll inverse it. Okay. So once I do my, my, my 3D virtual model, to control my bite, what I would do is I would apply bite registration, have the patient bite down, I would scan the bite and then it would match it up and it would give me the negative of the opposing tooth and that's how I get my occlusal contacts. Okay. Again, probably mid to late third quarter, um, they anticipate having a virtual articulate. Okay. Where you'd scan the lower, scan the upper, and then get the buccal shot. Okay. Okay. At the end of the day, really, taking the bite is very similar because you don't, you won't get a true lateral excursion if you just have a picture of the upper and the bottom and the buckle. The computer still has to figure it out. So, in comes cone beam integration, so okay. that you can get the true function. Really okay. So once we have the uh, once we have the virtual model built, what we do is we go on to the margin function. Okay. So what happens here is it allows me to set the model so that I have my proper path of insertion and what I want to do is get this red line parallel to the occlusal table. Okay. Once I have it there, then I click my orientation and it locks it in. So now I have to draw my margin. Okay, so I have an auto two automatic margin finders. Okay, the lasso is, is, is what you probably saw with Sarek. They have a paint one as well, so basically you just highlight it and then the system automatically finds the margin and then I can move it around and I can assess it. So again, if I want to move anything, everything in our software is click and drag with the mouse. It's very, very intuitive. If I want to correct any margins, I can go along and I can correct it and then it just fixes it up nice and tidy like that. Okay? Okay. Now, it's, it's important to get the margin on the right spot, but what's nice is that once I have my true tooth on my design phase, which is the next phase, I'll be able to see my emergence profile with respect, uh, the emergence profile of my tooth with respect to the preparation and, uh, and the root surface of the tooth. Okay, so now that I have my margin on, I'll show you what I mean. So the system is going to go through a process now called autogenesis. It's their proprietary name for putting a tooth on and building it out to fit. Okay, so once that's done, then I have to assess my proposal and then I make any changes that I want to do. Okay. So, now we look at it. We look at it from the view of, of economics, okay? The way I like to think about it is that you look at the macro or the big picture and then you look at the micro or the small picture. The first thing that I have is, is the anatomy of the occlusal surface of my tooth. I can control the detail, slope, and wear of the occlusal surface. So if I have a seven-year-old woman and this, these teeth are flat, it doesn't make any sense to put that tooth in their mouth, right? So I can slide the detail down and it's going to give me a preview of what that looks like. Okay, so basically my tooth library is infinite. So we'll slide it back up here. Okay. So once I'm happy with the occlusal design, I go back to it and I, and I do my changes. So the first thing I want to do is get a picture in my mind of what the tooth looks like with respect to the neighbors. Okay. Having the true contours of the neighboring teeth are important because it helps me with a better design. So I can rotate the tooth. I can move it to the buckle. Okay. I can do all different sorts of things. I can move one surface, I can move the other surface. Now, once I'm happy with the general position of the tooth, I get into my freeform tools or my, or my finishing detail tools, okay? So I know my marginal ridge on the distal here is high, so I need to fix that. So we have a dropper, which is a waxer, smooth surface, digital soft flex disc. Seeing my emergence profile and being able to move my margin with the tooth on my prep is a really big thing because it makes sure that I have good marginal integrity. However, this little rubber tooth here is what I do most of my work with. So, my marginal ridge is high, I just grab it and I pull it down. So when you're talking to me earlier about I have an opposing tooth patient with crossbite, right. really tough occlusion, and I want to adjust it specifically, it's just as easy as honing in on the spot and refining it based on what you see. It's all click and drag. Okay, so this is something that's unique to our system. But having the proper alignment, again, if I see that the, uh, the lingual surface of this tooth isn't convex enough, well, I can just grab it and I can pull it out. Okay, but having the, 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 the shape of the neighboring teeth is what helps me do that. Right. Okay. Again, pull this down, pull this out. The control is infinite. 
So at some point we've taken an impression of the by registration. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'll show you in an example okay. after. I normally have a bite to put on here to scan it. I'll show you in an okay. example how it actually works. Because that's important. That's how you get it. Right. That's how you get your, your food. Yeah, yeah. Okay? So let's say we're happy with the with this restoration, okay? So